Identity Stronghold's mission statement is simple. Inform and protect, and that's what they've done over the past 10 years. Over the last 5 years, they've completed over 70 news videos with owner, Walt Augustinowitz, on the streets sharing information about RFID protection. They were the first company to offer RFID protective merchandise to the U.S. government and to customers like you. Like other companies who started a whole industry, ID Stronghold paved the way for competing companies to follow. Because of that, you can walk into almost any retail store and find RFID protective merchandise. But are you really protected with these products? And are the companies who followed ID Stronghold really as good as the original? That's what we're here to find out. Hi, welcome to another episode of the Protection Examination. I'm your host, Dustin, and today we have two more wallets we're going to test. First off, we have Identity Stronghold's classic 10-slot bifold, and then we also have a bifold from Access Denied. Now, both of the wallets are very similar. They both have 10 card slots and an ID window, so 11 card slots. Now, the ID window is a slightly different for both of the wallets. In Identity Stronghold's, it flips side to side. And then with access denied, you can see here it goes up and down. So a little bit different there. Now the Identity Stronghold's leather seems very smooth, it's pliable, it's, and it also has this uh, accented stitching here. Gives it a nice look. And the access denied wallet has um, a little bit stiffer leather on it and kind of a dimple design on the front and then on the back. Uh, kind of looks like little half moons in the wallet. Now both of the wallets have a divided billfold section. You can separate your cash from receipts. Now last episode we went over the height and the weight of the wallets. This episode we are not going to do that simply because that information is available on the websites for each wallet. Um, so we're just going to jump right into the testing to see how it's going to protect you. We're going to start with Identity Stronghold's wallet. We're going to test each wallet, both open and closed, fully loaded and empty. So first off, we're going to test Identity Stronghold empty. Here we have an RFID chipped credit card that we're going to be using to test both of these wallets with. Now we're going to do this test just like the last time. We're going to try it uh, both open and closed in the ID windows and try loading up both wallets with credit cards uh, just to see how, what kind of protection you're getting from each wallet. So first off, we're going to start by putting this card. You can see it scans over the reader. So we're going to go ahead and put this card in the wallet here, right in the middle where you'd see, uh, see any normal card there. So right there, we're going to try this uh, closed and see how it fares over the reader. Okay, so nothing there. So we're going to go ahead and try open now. Make sure you're still getting shielding there. Okay, so still no reading. So Identity Stronghold does always claim that the ID slot, even with this hole, is still shielded. So we're going to go ahead and put that in that slot and try it again. So again, we're closing the wallet. We're going to put it over the scanner. Okay, nothing there. So we're actually going to try this open as well and in the ID slot. Still make sure that everything is good here. Okay, so still nothing. So it would seem that the RFID shielding in the Identity Stronghold wallet keeps you protected when it's both open and closed, even in the ID slot with this, this card here. So now we're gonna load the Identity Stronghold wallet with some other cards to test the shielding when the wallet is full. So now we have Identity Stronghold's billfold wallet completely filled with cards. We have our RFID chip here again. We're gonna go ahead and put this back in the wallet and give it the same test that we just did, but now with all the card slots full. We're gonna do this closed and open again. So we're gonna start with it closed. Okay, everything's shielded there, so now we're going to try it again, open. Okay, still shielded, so uh, just to keep everything consistent, we're going to go ahead and try it in the ID slot as well. Um, I know you won't always keep your uh, credit card in an ID window, but some states do have RFID chip uh, driver's licenses now, so those might still need protection. So we're going to go ahead and have this switched over to the ID window. We're going to do this closed and opened again. Okay, so still shielded, closed, so we're going to try it open with all the card slots full here. Okay, so still shielded, um, so we're going to go ahead and take uh, our RFID chip card here and put it in the access denied wallet and try that test uh, with the wallet completely empty first. 
Okay, so now we have the same RFID chip card. We're going to try it out with Access Denied's wallet here. You can see it's still able to be read. So we're going to go ahead and put it in one of the card slots, just like we did with the Identity Stronghold wallet right here. And we're going to try this open and closed. So we'll do closed first. And everything seems okay there. So we're going to, again, try the test with the wallet open. Okay, so it did beep there. It did scan the card. So it does appear that completely empty, this wallet uh, in this card slot here, it does scan the card. So we're gonna, just to keep everything consistent, we're moving on to the ID window. So we have it in here now. We're gonna go ahead and try this closed and open again. So closed. And it seems to be shielded. Uh, we're gonna try keeping it in that window and we're gonna try scanning it while it's open. Okay, so it did scan at that time as well. So it seems that while this wallet is empty, it does, uh, sh it does scan the card while it's open. However, when it's closed, it seems to be protected. So we're gonna go ahead and fill up this wallet with uh, cards and give it the same test. Here we have Access Denied's uh, wallet completely full with the same RFID chip credit card here. So we're gonna go ahead and put it into the wallet here and test it closed. Okay, so it did scan even with uh, with it closed there. So we're gonna go ahead and try it open just, uh, just to keep it consistent here. Okay, so that scanned too. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and slide this card into the ID window here and test that as well, uh, both open and closed again. So we're gonna do uh, closed first. Okay, so that's still scanned. And uh, so we're gonna go ahead and uh, just try that open too. And it's still scanning. So it does seem uh, both open and closed. Uh, no matter which pocket you have the card in, when this wallet is completely full, it does scan the card. So from what we saw with the testing, Access Denied's wallet seems to only shield your credit card when there's nothing else in the wallet except for the RFID chip credit card and the wallet is closed. As soon as we opened the wallet, it was able to scan the card. And then also, once we filled the wallet up with other cards, it was able to scan the card when it was both open and closed. And then Identity Stronghold's wallet seemed to have no problems whatsoever with shielding. We tried it open, closed, with cards and without cards, all of which passed our test. So there's definitely a little bit of a quality difference here with the two wallets. On the websites, you're going to find Access Denied's wallet for $53.95 and Identity Stronghold's wallet for $38.99. So hopefully this video will help you make a little bit more of an educated decision when you're buying an RFID blocking wallet.